Namaskar, I'm Ashok Vaita, and I'm delighted to have a very special show with someone who is a versatile person, an artist, a sports person, but more someone who is interested in discovering new things. And his groundbreaking work now is reaching us in the form of a book. And what is that book and how it relates to your and my heart? Uh, let me have the pleasure of welcoming uh, Dr. Dinkar Rai. Dr. Sir, welcome. Namaste. Namaskar. Namaskar. So, you have served the society in several ways, including uh, having led Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan here. But before that, during your uh, early days, uh, you uh, proved your uh, caliber as a cricket player. You are an artist also. You are interested in Vedanta. And now, the book uh, which is uh, bringing some new light, which is also endorsed by none other than Sadhguru. And uh, this is mechanical function of the atrial diastole, a new discovery. So let us jump right away to the book. Uh, what this book is all about, Dr. And what is this new discovery? This is the book. I want yeah. to show everybody the book first. Yes. This is mechanical function of the atrial diastole, a new discovery. The motion of blood in the venous system, now I'll find this. This is basically the book. Everything else you mentioned, yes, I was a cricketer when I was a student. I had a chance to play for the, uh, I was selected for the Ranji Trophy. I was. I led the South Zone Universities against Sunil Gavaskar. I played with Vishwanath. My teammate was Chandrasekhar and Prasanna, people like that. But uh, there was a time I had to decide whether I had to take uh, cricket or medicine, and th those days, medicine prevailed by also advice of my family, and I had to give up cricket and take up seriously medicine. That's why how I became a doctor. Actually, it was a match between Bombay and Karnataka. I was to play for Karnataka and Sunil Gavaskar first time playing for Bombay, and on the same day. I had to take final final MBA examination, gynecology, medicine, and surgery. And I thought I cannot do both, and I gave up one. Uh, that time it was very depressing, but later on, uh, what I've done retrospectively, uh, it's very satisfying to me today. I also was a, I'm also an artist, actually, not a very keen artist. Uh, one of my uh, pivotal work in art, if you want to know, I, at the age of 13, I did a portrait of President Kennedy. It is a special work known as Indian Ink Wash Work, taught by my guru, Gulam Muhammad. He's a very famous artist. And I gave this work, this portrait, as a gift to President who was living that time. So after his assassination, now it's preserved in the archives of Kennedy Museum. I see. So if you want to go there, if you go there, you can see it always. This is only. There's a few items they say that they got before his assassin passed away. That's why it's very important for them. So this, all these things actually ultimately helped me. It's the culmination of all these things is my present work. Even uh, you, you said philosophy. I'm a student of Sankhya philosophy of India. Sankhya, uh, one of the Shaddarshanas, written by Kapila. I was. I am the student of Sankhya. All these things have helped me. Actually, if you read my one of my articles on Sankhya philosophy, I have traced the uh, journey of Pythagoras. Pythagoras is the first uh, philosopher of Greece. Before that, I should say, with all humility, if I can say, Greek did not have that kind of a philosophical background to talk about. It was not philosophy. It was only for us. It is a kindergarten um, mythology they had in the form of stories. After Pythagoras came to India, I traced his uh, first, uh, first one to trace his journey. He came to India, studied in Ellor and Elephanta. I have proof for that, that he studied Sankhya philosophy and took the concept of Indian philosophy. Basically, he took the concept of Nada Brahma, sound is God. Uh, God is a word is God and, and uh, God is the word. That's, that's the philosophy he took back. And also reincarnation of our samsara, uh, ideas of soul and all he took back. And he created the great philosophical school of Alex Alexander School of Philosophy. Out of which came Socrates, Plato and Aristotle. And even the 
Alexander the Great is a student of Aristotle. So that is the beginning of Greek philosophy has some origin in India. Very important for us to know that as Indians, you know. So we can be very proud of our own philosophy. Sometimes we, the Western philosophy, think our philosophy is. Okay, so let me, uh, before we come to the book now, the reference of philosophy came. So people have a perception that uh, referring to Acharya Shankar also, they take part of uh, Brahma Satya Jagan Mitya and they say that uh, it is a kind of route to escape which people uh, kind of interpret is coming from Vedanta. I am sure uh, you can uh, enlighten us on the essence and how it is practically applicable. Or if I use another expression, which uh, is also known to be related to Swami Vivekananda, the practical application of Vedanta as uh, someone interested in uh, human body, uh, learning more about it, learning about heart, do you, do you see that Vedanta applies for the upliftment and complete growth of person? Yes. To, uh, for me, I, at that place, if you read my book, the prologue, uh, I mentioned how, uh, you know, help in the sense not that I can do experiments on the basis of Vedanta. You have to, in the modern science, you have to do experiments. You ought to have an experimental model. You can say something. Just saying is not acceptable. You have to show with a model. Yes. But sometimes you are stuck to interpret your own model. At that time, I think for me, uh, my understanding of Vedanta helped me, helped me. Even Albert Einstein, when he went to, into the theory of relativity, it's, you know, he has mentioned very clearly. He could explain relativity after he went through Eastern philosophy, Indian philosophy, because relativity is very commonly expressed expressed in Indian philosophy. The whole philosophy is the idea of relativity. You know? Oh, absolutely. Even uh, uh, the day day of Brahman is uh, a, a breath of Brahman is a day of Brahma. A day of Brahma is a yuga of a human being. Actually, what Kapila says is, it's only a time is only relative. For Brahma, Brahman is one breath, but Brahma is one day, but for you is one yuga. It is relativity. So, our Vedanta will definitely help in many ways, and we should make use of it. I'll tell you at, at a particular time in my, when I explain my book how it helped me, where I was, where I got stuck. Now, what is this book is all about is, let me inform you about mechanical functional justice. You may be surprised, till 16, 17th century, that is 1609, we thought it was very well taught and practiced that organ of circulation was, is liver. You may, be, you, may, you may find it stupid at the present time. It was not stupid. That's how it's practiced. It was... A, it started from Aristotle and Galenic area. Galen was the leader. He was the icon. He was the god of medicine, as a matter of fact. Nobody can refute him. Till uh, a British boy came on the scene known as William Harvey, who was born in 1578 in Kent. He was the first one courageous enough to say, heart is the organ of circulation. That was a big change. You know, he was, he was very courageous to say that. And and then, that time, what he explained it to us is, he said, the ventricle of the heart, when it goes into systole, when systole means for the folk, the common man also have to use the word. Systole is medical word. Systole means contraction. When it contracts, it pushes the blood forward in the arteries. And then the, this push is enough, the blood to come back to the heart. He did not mention the heart as atrium. I have to actually, anatomically today, heart has four chambers, two ventricles and two atrium. Atrium has no function. Nobody assigned it any function. They, they, he says nature has no 
assign no function to atrium, only nature is assigned function to ventricles. There is a reason for him to say that, but there is no reason for us to say today, actually. For him is the reason because he studied in 1590s, I think he came to Padua University, very famous university. He's, he came there because there was a celebrity anatomist. He became, his name is uh, uh, Fabricius Aqua Pendente. His name is, he's a very celebrity. You know why he became a celebrity? Because he's the first one in the veins of human body. There is something on his valves, doors, which opens. But nobody knew the function of the valves. He was the first one to buy visual experiments not there's no microscope or anything that time no du duplex scan or angiograms venograms so by just by visual uh, observations he established that the valves open in one direction and allows the blood to go up it doesn't allow the blood to go back so he the first one to discover the function of the venous valves that's why he became a celebrity and they gave him the chairmanship at the age of 33. So he was so great that William Harvey came from England to Padua. So there were schools in England, but there, Padua, Ferreira and Rome were like uh, Johns Hopkins or Harvard or Cambridge, like that it was that time. So they all came to study there. So he comes there and studies under Aquapendent. What he studies, he studies actually the function of the venous valves first. This is a very exciting thing for him. And he studies that that, that time, the curriculum vitae in Padua, you'll be interested, interesting that they used to teach anatomy written by Aristotle, physiology and philosophy written by Galen. That is their curriculum. So naturally, he studied anatomy written by Aristotle. So Aristotle in his original anatomy said, heart has heart is made up of two strong fibrous muscles. That means ventricular chambers. He did not think atria is part of the heart. He thought atria is very thin actually in consistency. So he thought it is an extended pouch of the veins where the veins come and join there. So he did not explain heart as atrium. So naturally William Harvey studied the same anatomy. He thought that heart means two ventricles. So he did not concentrate or talked about atrium. So he said heart during systole, ventricle pushes the blood. The blood goes into the arteries and that gives a pulsation of the arteries and comes back and comes back to the heart. That pushing force is enough, he thought. Later on, the anatomist described, no, it's not an extended pouch of the veins. It is a chamber, two chambers of the heart. They are known as atria. They named it atria. So atria was not assigned any function. Whatever we, William Harvey said, we are still following it. Even today, the cardiologist or the medical science has not assigned any function to the atrium. It is basically a collecting chamber. It's a, it's a pool where the blood comes and pools. So my experiment, there is a reason why I started. It was uh, thrusted into my consciousness. It was accidentally... I was, I was, uh, I, I'm also a pioneer in venous disease and venous field. So I had. Yeah, yeah let me inter uh, interrupt you so that our viewers are also with you as we come to this moment when this new discovery has uh, taken place. Uh, um, there is a methodology in science, and indeed, you need uh, certain tools or equipments uh, for your experiments along with the source resource material in your case uh, since you came from the sports background and you are an artist yourself and when you unveil the hidden secrets of science of human body and as you were mentioning before attempting or before you embarked upon uh, this uh, fascinating side of the functioning of art what is it that you did which kind of internally gave you uh, a clarity and if I say a kind of confidence that this is uh, a path that uh, is good for you to take? Okay. What happened to me is uh, 
when I when I finished my education as a vascular surgeon, I was working in Brooklyn Jewish Hospital. It is the, one of the biggest hospitals at that time in Brooklyn. It was the only one of the two places where they did cardiac surgery, open heart surgery. So I was a, I specialized in vascular surgery. So vascular surgery at that time means only arterial surgery because artery. That's the time they started arterial surgery. It was the most exciting part of surgery that time. Everybody was excited about arterial surgery, and. We had a lot of arterial surgeons, vascular surgeons in the hospital. And I was a young attending, just starting my practice. And uh, it was very difficult to get cases to do my private practice. So I was struggling hard to get cases, arterial surgery cases. So here I am not having any cases. Actually, if I have one case in a month, it's a big thing for me. So I had to make a living. So immediately I said to myself, I'll concentrate on the venous side of vascular venous side of the circulation, that, which is which is the most neglected part of medical science at that time. People used to have ulcers, venous ulcers, and nobody used to, you know, usually it was taken care of by the one who is at the lowest in the order. Usually the intern was given to change the dressing. So um, I said, I'll take care of this type of patients. So no sooner I decided that my office started flooding with patients with venous ulcers. You know, venous ulcers going for 10 years, 12 years, 20 years, patients having ulcers not being attended properly. And most of them had at the most varicose vein stripping. That's a common thing they did. Even on the scratch on the skin, they did that without making any sense of it. So I started studying this. So I was at that time only dressing the patient. I got bored with just dressing the patient. I want to do something. So I started studying the etiology of venous ulcers. Same time, I should say, there was an awakening in the rest of the country. So two or other three people started doing the same thing. One is Kistner in the West. And there is a very, very well-known cardiothoracic surgeon. He got interest in venous surgery. He's known him. Sheshadri Raju, in the East, myself and Dr. Taheri, the other people started it. And we exchanged our books, our understanding. And Kistner gets the credit for doing the first vein valvuloplasty. I see. Raju popularized it very much. Taheri did the vein valve transplantation to the femoral vein above the knee. I was the first one to do. Uh, vein valve transplantation below the knee into the popliteal vein. I was the first one to do that. So that is how my interest in venous field started. And we are the pioneers of venous disease in this country. Yeah. Dr. Rai, we probably may not have a lot of time. So I now will bring you back to your current discovery, which is uh, considered as a kind of a groundbreaking work. And kindly share with us how was it when you felt a sense of eureka moment in terms of uh, your findings and you saw that there is something which people are not uh, aware of? I, I guess um, you also discussed this with many people, including Sadhguru, uh, a part of what was your observation about art. So talk to us about both sides. Okay. First, let me tell you, when I was doing a descending phlebography, Accidentally, I observed a, a rare motion of the venous valves. When the patient was standing, it was opening and closing during every heartbeat. And I went through the history. This was never described or understood or ever thought about in the past. So this was a new finding. The venous valves open and close. This is the first discovery I did, which you can see in the YouTube. If you put my name, go to YouTube, venous valve motion. Is the first discovery. The venous valves open and close during every heartbeat. So I was wondering why it is opening and closing. Is it passive or active? I realized mm -hmm. it's active because it is secondary to the heartbeat. That's why I started doing experiment on the heart. And I found that these valves open during every atrial diastole. So I developed a DOCS model, canine model, and did the experiments on the heart. And suddenly realized that during atrial diastole, 
atrium is not a passive collecting chamber of the heart. At both systole, there's contraction of the heart muscle, diastole is, is the expansion of the muscle. At the present time, they think the systole contraction is active part, diastole is a passive part. It has no, it is not active. It is a resting phase. So I realized that then act, both are active. Systole is active, diastole is also active. What happens during diastole? Atrium expands, muscle expands, and creates a negative force and sucks the blood back from the venous system. So it keeps the blood in motion in the venous system. The ventricle, ventricular systole pushes the blood and keeps the blood in motion in the arterial system. Atrium creates negative pressure, sucks the blood back in the venous system. So atrium and ventricle equally shares the function of the heart. So now it is only the ventricular system is the function of the heart. So what happens now onwards is heart is not only a forward pushing pump. It is both a forward pushing pump and backward suctioning pump as well. It is a dual pump. So it is equally shares. Actually atrium is very very much responsible for the motion of the blood is the circulation. So this is something groundbreaking actually this is the ventricular systolic function was identified by william harvey 400 years back mm -hmm. and after that we are following that teaching even today now this is after 400 years a new physiological function that is discovered in the heart that's why it's groundbreaking second thing is also discovery of the venous motion of the venous valves so that is why now it will open a new door See, all the work, all the research, everything, the medication, devices, anything is done to suit the ventricular systolic function, to help the patient from that point of view. Now, I, this work will open a new door. Entire world of research to understand the atrial function, the devices, treatment, uh, the new entity of new understanding of the disease of the heart, even the failure of the heart. We, so far, we are calling heart failures, right failure, right heart or left heart. It's not so. It could be ventricular failure or the atrial failure. So now we will we start talking about right ventricular failure, left ventricular failure, right atrial failure, left. Things will. What I see is uh, the possibilities are immense. Sky is the limit. Yes, sir, That's no, uh, for layman's point of view, if they hear about Dr. Dinkar Rai having a groundbreaking work and any family member or the person himself is uh, facing some challenges from the heart uh, condition, who, they would try to understand in simple words the possible long-term impact of your discovery as it would trickle down for the benefit of a common patient. What would that be? What would change? Um, it will, you know, patients, uh, I have, from my point of view, I have found a new function of the heart. This is a basic physiology of the heart. Physiology is the, the basis out of which you develop new understanding, new research, understanding of the disease of the heart, new medications, new devices to treat. From that point of view, new things will come. Those who are suffering from heart failure, some heart conditions, heart ailments, get, get some new light. And uh, uh, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Another another question. Anything new, even if it is not in the scientific realm, people take time in accepting and adapting. In the case of a scientific discovery, there are certain protocols in place. There are certain organization who would validate so from that point of view how so far have been the response I, I absolutely agree with you but today's life today it is different mr vyas you should know as a matter of fact right now i am talking to you thousands of people who can see this when william harvey did that 500 years 400 years back his ideas came into existence after 70 to 100 years later Till then, it was not practiced. Today, we are organizations. My discovery also will stay unless it is recognized and made known. As a matter of nowadays, you know, 
there are certain recognizing organizations. For example, Pulitzer, say, recognizes this work. Suddenly, everybody will know. Or a Nobel Prize. All this, I'm not saying to that extent, but I, what I'm saying is, it is possible. Um, Amrutya said his work, economy, wouldn't have known or wouldn't have practiced unless he got a Nobel Prize. So these organizations make it very important. And once that is recognized by this type of organizations, scientific world is behooved to practice it. They have so to accept it. Otherwise, you take its own time. I agree with you. Yeah. So now, what now, next? Technology is such, the communication is such, uh, what I do today can be, I can inform to the whole world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, without any doubt. And at such a fast uh, pace uh, that even a decade ago, we could not have even imagined. Um, so now as we move towards the concluding part, what next for you? Uh, you definitely would like more and more people uh, to read the book and learn uh, but uh, you see that this will be of interest for only medical practitioners or for a common man also. And the new understanding of heart, uh, if you sort of um, share briefly again, what would you say um, is different now with your new discovery? Next thing for me, actually, for me, I have discovered something. Few people know that. I know it for definite. And also, it is published already. It's not something that uh, is in the book. It's a published work. Most of them are published. Some of them uh, needs to be validated. But uh, most of them are published. And some of them are kernels for new understanding and new research. That's, that's, that's how it is. My next job is to see that everybody comes to know about it. And not only know about it, they start incorporating into the textbooks and practicing it and, and lastly last question which is for everyone what is it that helps you sustain your inquisitiveness intact many people uh, with age feel that i am done done with learning more where i am is uh, the place to be so what keeps you alive for learning you know when you learn yourself I may be, might have discovered, but I am learning myself by doing research. When you learn yourself, it keeps you going. If you if you are practicing medicine for the sake of practicing, just clinic, clinic, clinical medicine not enough. Every clinician has to do research. Then it keeps you going. You what never you? feel old, uh, or also you are always wanting when you are learning. That's what I feel. I appreciate that very much. Uh, and as an interviewee, uh, interviewer, uh, this uh, bridge of uh, increasing understanding uh, for me as well as for the viewers. Uh, and it's such a pleasure and honor uh, to be talking to someone like Dr. Dinkar Rai, who has uh, generously shared his groundbreaking work with us. So. Uh, with lots and lots of good wishes, I uh, thank you and congratulate you. Um, thank you, Mr. Vyas, for uh, inviting me for an interview. And thank I, you I, very much. I hasten to add that uh, the chairman of ITV Gold, Padmasri Dr. Subir Parikh, also comes from medical <laughs> fraternity. So doctors are serving in serving in different ways. Uh, is a source <laughs> of joy, <laughs> source of yeah. joy. So while I thank him, I thank all of you for yeah. yeah. being you. with us. Thank this you. is Ashok Vyas. Namaste.